Hello everybody, this is Jeff Manning with Team Real in the Blues. Today in this video, I'm going to go over just some basics about your depth finder. I get so many questions about what do I look for when I look at the depth finder, or what am I looking for when I'm seeing the fish on the screen. Today I'm going to try to explain to you what you're actually looking at. A lot of people get confused by the arches. Oh, they get all hung up because of the fact they don't get this big full arch, or they only get a half an arch, the front half or the back half. Today I'm going to try to explain to you what you're actually looking at. Just because you get a half arch doesn't mean your transducer is wrong. It just means your fish is not in your transducer. What people don't understand, and what most of them just don't really think about, is the fact that it comes out in a cone. It's a sound wave. It comes out just like this. The deeper the water is, the lot larger the area of the bottom that you're going to see because the cone gets wider and wider and wider as it goes toward the bottom. So a lot of times people that get those little half arches, the reason why is because they're catching just the edge of the cone. I'll demonstrate that a few minutes on a uh, drawing. Same way with a full arch, what ends up happening is the fish gets in the cone, stays in the cone, and then exits the cone. So what happens is when he enters it, he's getting the weakest amount of signal. Because you got to think, the cone, the sound is going down at an angle. So when it hits something, it has a tendency to want to deflect. So you're losing part of your return signal instead of it coming straight back up to the transducer for the computer to read it. It's bouncing off and going nowhere. That's why the outer edges of the cone are the weakest part. The center is the strongest part. The reason why, the beam comes down from the top. It's coming down in more of a straight line, so you get a straight return. Gives you a lot more signal bouncing back, so all of a sudden, now it gets wider and thicker. So you get a taper, thick, back down to nothing. The reason why is he came into the cone, stayed in the cone, exited the cone. And that's why you get that perfect arch. I'm going to try to demonstrate that with just a few drawings. As I was just talking about, this is a perfect example of what the cone would look like. You've got your boat, everything comes directly out the bottom, the signal spreads and goes out. The deeper the water, the wider the cone. So you'll have the weaker part here, the center of the cone is going to be your strongest part, and this is going to be your weakest part. And the reason why is the sound wave hits, deflects off. Some of it comes back, but a lot of it deflects off. When it comes straight down, the sound waves come straight back up toward the boat. That's why you get such a thick, strong signal. So I'm going to draw this out here. I'm just trying to explain this the best I can. So... This fish just entered the cone. Now he's in the strongest part of the cone and he's about to exit. So I'm gonna go to right here and I'm gonna stop it. So what we have here, you can see this fish here is just starting to enter the cone. This one is already gone. This one is just starting to enter the cone and he's done left it. This one is in the middle or the strongest part of the cone. So well, let's look to see what those arches should look like. This fish here, you should get a return sort of like this one right here. You see he's entered the cone right here. He's at the thickest part of the cone. That would be he's right in the middle. He hasn't exited yet, so you don't have the return yet. The reason why you get these little half arches is they catch the edge of the cone. And I'll demonstrate that here in just a second. So if you stop frame this right here, this view, we've got five fish total on this screen. One here one in the middle, one there, one up here, one there. What you'd end up having, let's start with the one that's the best arch. This one has already come into the screen, has went through, you, the boat was going this way, so he's hit the weaker part, he's got to the stronger part, he's back down to the weaker part. So that would be this arch right here. You can see where he entered it, he got to the peak of it, and then he exited. Take this fish here. He's just starting to enter the cone. And he's already starting to get a few returns. Now you gotta think, the distance from here to here and the distance from here to there, even though it's on the same level plane, is greater because it's at an angle. That's why you start to see the arch. Because in actuality, when this first signal hit that fish, if you measure that line from there to here, let's just throw a theoretical number out there say from here to here in an angle is 22 feet. Well, when you get this fish directly below the boat, from here to the boat will only be 20 feet. 
That's why the arch starts to climb. That's why you get this. Right here is at 22 feet. Here's 20 feet, and then here's 22 to feet again. That's when he entered the cone, longer distance. At the very outside edge. Right here is in the middle of the cone. He's dead center directly below the boat. Right here is when he exited the cone. That's why you get an arch. When you're in deeper water, you'll get a lot longer arch because you're in deeper water. So the cone is a lot larger at the bottom. Let's just ramp this up. Let's say this is 200 feet deep. If this is 200 feet deep, then this angle from here to this fish here may be 190 feet. Well, when you get directly below the boat, it's only going to be 170 feet. So now you're going to have a 20-foot rise in that arch. I know you've seen that before, and a lot of times it'll be skinny as it can be, skinny, 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 and then it'll finally get a little thicker in the middle, and then it goes way off again. That's why you get the arch. Okay, so let's look at this, uh, this display of fish again. So you've got the fish up in the top, and you got to look. He went right through the cone at the very top. So you see how short the time was that he was actually inside the transducer. Let's just call it the transducer cone. This was the shortest time that one was in it. So a lot of times you'll get just a blip. You'll get this little line here with not hardly any curvature in it. And the reason why, because the distance stayed the same almost the whole way across, and it stays pretty consistent on its thickness because he was in a strong part. He was closer to the boat, so he was in a stronger part of the signal the whole time. Now, let's go back over here. We got this fish. He's just starting to enter the cone. So you'd get something like this. So you're starting to see him right now. This fish here, he's in the center of the cone. You see right here, we seen him way off because he was deeper. So we're getting a lot bigger signal. And if you'll notice, this fish here, I drew it bigger on purpose than this fish. But you'll notice this one's giving me a lot bigger return. The reason why? Because it was further down in the water column. So he's in the cone longer, so you're going to get a lot longer arch. Okay, now let's look at the cone from above. Here's the cone. It's broadcasting straight down. This is your weakest part of the signal. This part's going to give you the weakest return. This is going to give you the strongest return. So what you'll end up having... This fish right here, let's just use him for example. He's in the center of the cone. So he's went through the weak phase. Now he's right at the peak. He hasn't exited the cone yet. He's right dead center below the boat. So this will be what you will have seen up to this point. So right here is the screen on your depth finder right here. So you would see this, see this. When you see this, when it gets to its thickest point, it's directly below the boat. And then you would see the return. This fish here. You see how he's went all the way through the cone. The boat's going this way. You're going to get this return. He came into the cone. He peeked out. This is the actual depth. Where you see the top of this, that's the actual depth. All the rest of this is just when he was on the outside edges of the cone. This is telling you what the actual depth is. So he entered the cone. Here's his actual depth because he's directly below the boat. And then he exited the cone. So he entered it, center of it, exited it. That's why you get this. Sometimes you'll get a half like this, or you'll get a half like this. The reason for that is when the fish came through, he came through the very edge. So you never really got any of the strong signal. So what ended up happening is you just caught just a clip, so you get just a partial, and then he's gone because he came out of it so quick. One more time. You can see this is what you end up getting right here. The fish is in the cone. You'll barely see it. He's in the center of the cone. Now the top of the arch. And then he's out of the cone. It'll bottom out at the arch. I hope my caveman drawings gave you a little bit better understanding of what you're looking at. There's a bunch of variables. Water temperature can change the strength of your signal. Uh, water clarity definitely changes the strength of your signal. Uh, also, what frequency transducer you got to use. You got to understand, each time you change that frequency, you're changing that cone shape a lot of times. So, that plays a big difference in how big an arch you're going to see. You can see the same fish under one frequency, change it to another frequency, go back over that fish, you're going to get a totally different shape to that arch. But it'll still be an arch, 
but it'll be shorter. Or you may catch just a thump of it because the cone's narrower. I hope you'll get some information out of this that'll help you. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Thank you for watching.